Hi everyone, welcome to SeniorGolfSource.com. My name is Brett Francisco, Certified PGA Instructor, and today I'm going to help you seniors out with understanding how to develop more strength on your body. Uh, there are some very easy exercises that we can stay on top of that will help you develop greater muscle tone and allow you that couple extra yards on the course that you need, and it's also going to help you live a healthier life. So before we get into that, I definitely want you to check with your primary care physician and make sure that this is something that you can do. I am not a medical professional, so the last thing I want to do is further injure something that's already happening. So take this advice to your primary care provider. Make sure it's something that you can do, and uh, we'll see how it works on the course. So first things first, you know, going to your medical provider you want to make sure that you get some lab work done. Um, make sure we understand our body mass index. Uh, we understand our cholesterol, what we can and cannot do as far as mobility goes. Um, because again, the last thing I want to do is put you in further jeopardy of being injured. So I'm going to start off with some lighter exercises that are helped to gear towards the golf specific muscles that will help you yield greater results on the course. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do, and highly encourage uh, senior golfers to pick up what's called a resistance band. Um, they come in various uh, forms of strength. Some are a little bit more elastic than others. Um, so you need to make sure, again, what you can handle. I'd start um, with a lighter flex and then start working your way up to a more firm flex. So the first exercise we're going to work on is getting those shoulders moving. So if you're a senior and you've used your arms for whether it's work, sitting at the desk, typing, uh, your shoulders can get tight. And what I want you to be able to do is have mobility there. That's going to help us with our overall length of our swing. So the greater the distance that we're able to swing the club, the greater the chances that we're going to increase club head speed. Frozen shoulders will limit that. So the first exercise up today is going to be what's called no monies. So you're going to start with your hands straight up. And we're going to take the band, put our elbows directly to our side. Go ahead and make a fist. And what we're going to do is just pull that band apart. And when we're doing that, we don't want to let our elbows, so if you find yourself doing this to stretch the band, maybe grip it a little bit lighter or go to a lighter band. That way you can keep your elbows fixed to your sides as you're doing the whole, where's my money type of routine. Um, what I'm going to recommend we do is three sets of 10 and take breaks in between your reps. The next thing we're going to do is using the same band, I'm going to do what's called a tricep kickback. Um, that tricep kickback, what I'll do is I'll step out of frame. I'm going to step with my foot on the band. I'm going to position uh, the foot that's not stepping on the band back, and I'm going to tilt forward. Now notice that I've kept my spine in a pretty direct line. None of this, okay? So doing this in front of a mirror will be beneficial. That way you don't get yourself into a bad postural position. We're going to go here. Again, elbow to the side. And all I'm going to do is simply pull it back and forth. And when I go back, you should feel a nice pull on the tricep. Now when we're doing this, slow is the name of the game. We don't want to do this fast. We want those muscles to understand what is going on, um, not just this quick blast of energy um, because you're not necessarily going to be training the muscles properly. So we've got some movement in the shoulder exercise with the no monies. We've got some tricep kickbacks. And then the next one I want to work on um, will help us increase the range of our shoulders up and down, okay? So what I'll do here, standing face forward to you, I'm gonna take it, stand directly, as vertical as I can. I'm gonna hold it towards the end of the band because I'm standing on it now, and I'm simply just gonna go out, hold, and come back down slowly. Again, three sets of 10. And I'm gonna do it on my right side, and then I'll just switch, and I'll go to the left side. 
Now you might find that one side is more uh, mobile than the other, and that's perfect because we can identify areas that we need to improve on. Um, again, frozen shoulders are something that golfers struggle with um, getting a good arc to their swing. So if you know or your friends have told you just you need to swing longer um, and you can't because of your shoulders, these are great exercises to help increase that mobility. All right. So now that we've talked about shoulders, we've talked a little bit about the arms, um, I want to talk about range of motion in our body. So as you get older, um, core strength typically declines and really your, your core and your legs are where a lot of your power will come from. Um, so that's where diet really makes a big difference. Um, even myself, I've, I'm on a current uh, diet right now. Um, actually, I'll say a different lifestyle right now. I'm really cutting out the sugar, sugar um, and, and watching my carbs. Um, the sugar is just an inflammatory substance that you're putting into your body. Um, I know that uh, soda is good from time to time. Um, everybody likes their sweets, whether it's in the form of ice cream or, or, or some type of cake, um, but definitely limit that intake if you're looking to improve your overall strength um, and health condition. So I'm going to step back and show you a couple of core exercises um, that will pair well with a good lifestyle change in diet. Uh, the first one I'm gonna go over is a plank. Now there's two different variations of the plank that we can go through. Um, there's gonna be more an advanced version and then there's gonna be a beginner's version. So I'll start with the beginner version what you'll do, um, essentially, you're getting yourself into a push-up position. So I'll, I'll go down, knees on the ground, and starting in the beginning position, I'm going to go elbows on the ground and bring my, my knees up off the ground. Here I'm going to hold it. And if you can start with a plank, um, let's try to shoot for maybe 20 seconds. Um, when you're doing these planks, it's super important that you're contracting the right muscles. So what I always like to tell people is you want to feel like you're tightening up your stomach and you want to feel like you're tightening up your glutes. So go into the plank formation for the beginner, tighten that stomach, squeeze your glutes as long as you can. We're going to start with 20 seconds. Um, as you do that, we'll incrementally work our way up. Um, I'd like to see you doing a full minute um, after a couple of weeks. Um, trust me, it's going to burn. You're going to feel it, um, but it's a good thing. You're reactivating some strong muscles that we need. The more advanced version of the plank is simply just getting into the push-up position on your palms. And same rules apply. We're trying to keep it straight, so you don't want to arch your backside in the air, and you don't want it to sag. So if you can get yourself in front of a mirror, it's, it's very beneficial because you'll see if your posture is out of place. Same deal, squeeze your belly, squeeze your glutes. Now the next exercise um, is going to be the supportive version of what the plank was. Plank's working on the core. Well, I'm gonna start working on the back side of my glutes. So now I'm gonna do what are called bridges. Um, personally, I like to use um, my slam ball. This is a 10 pound slam ball. It's basically the, the size of a volleyball, but it's weighted. And what I'll do with my glute bridges, I'll lay on my back, get into position. I'll put the ball just kind of right at my pelvic area, just above it. And I'll go completely on my back and I'm going to go hips to the sky. And again, I'm going to hold it here. And as I slowly come down, I don't want to do this fast. And as I go up and down, I'm going to hold that position, really squeezing those glutes. And that will help strengthen up our, our back muscles in our lower back. It's going to help work on our quads, on our, on our legs, all these muscles that are essential for power. So we've talked about shoulders. We've talked a tiny bit about arms. I'm not too worried about arms right now. 
and we've talked about core and lower body. So now that we've got that, I'm gonna share with you one of my favorite exercises. Um, you can do this indoor, just make sure that uh, there's enough room for you to potentially make a swing. So if you're doing it indoors, um, taller ceilings are recommended and uh, possibly even the garage. If not, it's sunny outside here, so maybe you could just go do this out in the front yard. So this drill will help us utilize all those muscle groups that we just worked on. I'm going to go ahead and take a golf club of mine. Being a right-handed golfer, I'm gonna make sure that the heavy end, so the grooved part of the head is facing down my target line. So for me, being right-handed, I'm gonna be grabbing it with my left hand and I'm gonna grab it palm down, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is go right hand palm up and you'll notice I have a couple inches in between my hands. What I'm gonna do here is in the backswing, I'll take the club back. If you notice, if I pull with my trail arm coming back, it's going to help secure a straight left arm, which is going to help me increase my shoulder turn. What happens for a lot of senior golfers is that elbow will break because there's lack of mobility in the shoulders and they, they get the club more so back with their hands and elbows than they do with their shoulders. Now there's a big problem with that. If I'm taking it back and hinging at the elbow, notice the distance where my hands are in relationship to my head. They're pretty close if you're looking from straight on. If I were to get that pull position, look how much further that left arm and hand just got away from the right side of my head. There's a greater distance. So that means that the arc, the overall arc of my swing is getting wider and that means more potential room for speed. If it's narrow, forget it. You're not gonna develop a lot of speed. It might be quick, but it's not going to yield a faster club head speed. Wider arcing swings will give you the potential to generate more speed with more of an effortless type of motion. So as we go back, we make that move. And now as we come down, the sequence of coming down is you want to pull with your left arm now. And again, I'm speaking to us right-handed golfers. If you're a lefty, just transpose exactly what I'm saying to the opposite hand. When we come down, I'm going to let go with that right hand and I'm going to let it just hold on with my left. So again, sequence, I go to the top, pull it, get that extension in that, in that lead arm, come down, let go with the trail arm, and you want to feel like you can reach the target. So if I'm swinging towards you doing this drill, I'll go to the top, coming through, I want to feel like I can get my hand, my trail hand, perfectly down my target line. Um, this is a great exercise because not only does it help you accentuate a good shoulder turn, but it makes you have good sequence and it makes you finish things. So you're doing a lot of really positive reinforcements for your swing with a simple drill like this. Um, doing this drill, it's pretty much you know, non-weight bearing, so it's something you can do a lot. Um, and it's, it's something I do quite regularly before I start actually hitting balls. It's a great warm-up drill. It's something to keep things moving. So now that we've covered that stuff, I'd love to see your comments. Um, and if you like the content that we're putting out, please like and subscribe um, for more. And again, please let us know maybe some of your favorite exercises or if there's something that you would like for me to cover, I'd be happy to do so. So thanks again for visiting SeniorGolfSource.com and I'll see you guys next time.